20th. All right, let's call the meeting, the emergency board of county commission meeting for April 20th, 2017 at four o'clock. Again, to the public, this is an emergency county commission meeting based on brush fires. I will turn the meeting over to Chief Quinn Romay right now. Chief Romay, you have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate uh, y'all coming out and hearing us. This is a team effort between us and the state forestry. Uh, we, we've been having meetings ongoing since February with forestry, all the players, uh, the U.S. Forest Service, us, the water management, uh, the park service. There's dozens of us in, you know, that have been meeting, working on this very issue in anticipation of having to do a burn ban, having to you know, declare a state of emergency. What we're seeing now in the field is, is conditions that we have not seen since early, in my opinion, early 1998, when we were having the fires, which were in you know, late May, June, July, August, and on. Uh, this is not the time we should be seeing the fire conditions uh, we're seeing uh, you know, this time of year. Uh, we just had a hurricane in, you know, in October, but as I was speaking with Mr. Pickens uh, earlier this week, the dry conditions that, that are out there are, um, like I said, 1998 uh, type conditions. We're having fires, we're having conditions where it's difficult for us to get ahead of it. And I think it takes time to get the burn ban out and the information out. And I think we're being prudent today in doing this uh, in the fact that we wanna get the message out so at least that portion of the type fires, we're not having to chase. Right. Somebody, you know, carelessly letting a fire go or having a campfire or having some, some uh, land clearing fire that that's gets away from them because they just don't realize the condition and we're not able to catch it, so. Do you have anything? No, no just, that's one of the, the main reasons. State your name for the. Jason Fauche, Forest Area Supervisor, Putnam County. Okay. Florida Forest Service. Uh, the main reason me and me, Mr. Quinn have been talking is if you if we can get go into a burn ban, these small fires, people burning their leaves in their yard, whatever, we'll quit chasing them so much and uh, using all our resources on them and just kind of sitting back anticipating for the bigger fires when we do have an arson or accidental set or whatever. So that can, you know, we only got so many crews, so many firefighters in the county. So it's to help us when we do get a fire going to, uh, get all our resources at one spot at one time instead of being strung out all over the county. So okay. this here could help us tremendously. Now, does this uh, pertain to um, commercial purposes of burn also? Yes. Okay, it does. Okay. Because I know we got some road building going on out in the West End and they're piling up their their uh, limbs and stuff for anticipation of burning. Is this is going to stop that also? Yes, sir. I would want it to stop that also. All right. Let me ask you one more that I heard today. What about burning in a burn barrel or contained apparatus? Yes, I don't want any of that being. You burned. don't want any burning going on. Burned. Charcoal grill. You can grill out in a man-made <coughs> containerized for that purpose only. As far as burning any kind of materials in burn bin or barrel or anything, they can still spread, spot out, and then have another fire. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you said that. The other day, I, I built a little fire down by the lake, and that thing burnt for two days. So I, I mean, I, I've never seen it burn like it did. It just burnt and burnt and burnt. You know, the wood did. So usually it burns right out, but for that one, it didn't. We've got, and just for the for the record, we've got fires going that started back in early February that we're still working, and we've got crews on. You know, wow. them. Uh, we're just trying to keep them where they're at. We cannot put it out. Okay, it's, it's so dry. Also. Jason mentioned arson. I want to publicly commend the sheriff's office for all of their hard work over the last couple of years with us, uh, you know, in making a dent in that. But arson is one of the bigger concerns we have also. You know, if you don't have somebody mistakenly or uh, accidentally setting a fire, something else caused the fire. And, uh, you know, arson is a problem. Arson has been a problem. And, you know, the sheriff's office due diligence and and helping has been truly a, a blessing in, in keeping us safe also. So it's a team effort and they've been at the meetings also. Thank you. I did provide, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I was just wanted to reiterate, basically you can have a barbecue grill, 
that's it. That's pretty much it. No burn barrels, no small pile, no, no anything burning. Uh, I did have a question. Uh, actually, I got this letter about the lady that's uh, is complaining about over at Hogwaller. Those vehicles, are those required to have spark arresters? Uh, is that something we're going to try to enforce? Or is that something we even need to worry about? The spark arresters, I, I spoke with her this morning, and I would say it, uh, Mr. Manning and, and Brian uh, with the building department and all, there's, there would have to be some additional legislative ordinances, things okay, like so that. Okay, so that wouldn't have anything to, to do that. with this. There's nothing that I know of we have the ability to require four-wheelers and other manufactured-type uh, off-road things to have spark arresters. Um, that okay. would be a question. But I noticed that one of the things in here was catalytic converter, so you just want to make sure people are aware that the catalytic converter does get very hot. They pull Absolutely. over on the dry grass. It, 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 right. So basically... Barbecue grill, barbecue grill, and that's it. Everything we have in that uh, the declaration are things that we've had fire starts from in the past. So we, you know, obviously you can't uh, capture everything, but you know, we some of the bigger, bigger items we we've, we've certainly right. tried to address that so that people understand. You know, we're not looking for people with catalytic converters and saying, "Oh, what are you, what are you doing?" But just be it's cautious. It's an awareness thing, certainly. Right. Yeah. Well, I know that yesterday, oddly, <clears throat> um, my wife works in East Palaka. She said that there was a major storm. I mean, it was a big storm came through there, blew through there in a hurry, uh, which brings the lightning. And, and, We're anticipating and, some yeah. weather this weekend also, probably yeah. on the Sunday, Monday. So we'll see what kind of precipitation we get out of it. And, and hope for the rain and no lightning. And, the light. and I'm glad you mentioned that because... Where we're at right now with the dry conditions, Sunday's rain, if it rained all day, is not going to get us out of the situation we're in. We're, we're talking afternoon thunderstorms or a steady pattern of rain coming up to, uh, to help start alleviate that, uh, which are the two documents that I gave you. This is yes. the long-term forecast from the Florida Forest Service meteorologist, and then the fuel and behavior advisory from this is from the u.s forest service for florida just kind of gives you a, uh, some ideas of what you know how, how bad is bad if you will and part of the conversation we had earlier with the u.s forest service their drought index you know they're seeing uh swamps that usually should have chest deep water with nothing nothing in it so we're as i said all the players have been at the table since you know early this year and we feel that this is the most prudent thing to do uh, right now in making sure that we try to keep our, our citizens safe. I agree. Yeah, I can see I've, uh, I have a creek that runs through my property that generally is about not even a foot deep. It's now about one inch deep. Yes. Commissioner Pickett? Yeah, you said it will also stop the commercial bur burning. Yes, sir. Are there any, do you issue like active permits that would take, say, a few weeks to get all of the debris burned that well, you'll have to stop that? You know, mm -hmm. stop somebody from in the middle of their project? Yes, sir. Once we, we go day by day as a, which I've taken on officer in charge for my district, which is five counties I take over starting tonight. So I issue from Levy County to the Gulf Coast to here. My call tonight is no burning for any of them counties. So yeah. that's no permits no, for nothing, commercial, agriculture, civil culture, anything. There'll be no burning. And y'all have not issued anything? We've not burning. issued any burns for the, probably about two weeks straight now also. Okay. And looks like we're going to continue that pattern. Right. What, what methods will you use, Quinn, and um, to uh, get the information out to the general public and, you know, to businesses and stuff? We have a partnership, uh, Ludie Bonds, with the Florida Forest Service, our PIO folks at, with emergency services. Uh, we've already uh, reached out to the sheriff's office. We've got the school board helping us with their media group. We've already got a, a planned uh, media blitz, if you will. Allison has been very helpful. She's been to a couple of our meetings already. Uh, just to make sure that they're, you know, know what we're doing and how we're doing it. And uh, plus we're going to put out the variable message boards at, you know, different intersections. Uh, we've 
already had a lot of conversation with some of the local businesses that have the uh, the message boards on their signs. We're going to ask them to uh, to help us out. So we also have a flyer going out to the school, all the kids. Uh, they'll be taking that home uh, either tomorrow or Monday and uh, notifying everybody that way. And we also have the reverse 911 system where we can do uh, additional notifications. So we have a, a big media push coming up. Good, thank you. This is about saving lives Absolutely and saving no property, and more importantly, lives of firefighters in Putnam County and surrounding areas. So uh, thank you, gentlemen, very much for this. Um, I guess we're going to now. Is there any questions from the audience and <coughs> public input? May I, I do have one more question. Okay, what, what kind? And you may have mentioned what kind of rainfall and a, a period of time do you before you could lift this? Do you have a scenario where you could say we've got six inches in a month period, or is it it's hard? To Based say? on the weather forecast and in speaking with the National Weather Service forecasters in Jacksonville, along with the uh, Florida Forest Service uh, meteorologists. I don't think we're going to be in a in a position to be able to lift this for quite some time. Uh, they're not predicting any measurable rain until you know through June. So, uh, and like Jason said, what really concerns us is if we have a small little front come through, like the one this weekend, and we get a lot of lightning and no rain. Now we've got hundreds of different fires going, and you know if we can eliminate one one type of fire potential start, you know and manage our resources because we're all limited on on the different resources we have so we have to try to put different packages together and Jason and I've already been working on a couple of different things of uh, fire departments and tractors and strike teams and things like that so, uh, I have one more question um, thank you um, what if you already have everything piled up I had a lady today tell me she's got a big pile already and she was going to go home and try to burn it prior to four o'clock, which she was just teasing me on, but what would what if you got it piled up now? Is it what's the safest way to manage that pile? Is it to unpile it? Is it to mm -hmm. it is to unpile it? I would unpile it and put it out by the road and let uh, okay. the waste pro or the okay folks come pick it up. That would be my suggestion. Secondly, take it to one of the landfills to be able to uh, dispose okay. of it that way, but or just wait you know, right. and, and make sure that you, because the, the worst thing we, you know, you can have happen is you, you want to go out and, and try to eliminate that pile of whatever it is, and it gets away from you. Now you are not only responsible for what that fire, but anything else, you know, that's, right. that's a consequence of that fire. So you could be civil litigation, you know, a lot of different things going on. So. so what should the general public do if they see or smell smoke and fire? If you see a fire, certainly give uh, 911 a call, and we're going to send somebody out to do that. If you see smoke in the areas that we already have, uh, we know we've got fires. We know those areas. We've got folks patrolling those areas, uh, such as Bellamy Road, 315 North, uh, the county line fire. Those. I mean, we know where we've got fires now. So the just seeing smoke, not necessarily, but if you see a, you know a column of smoke that's, that's abnormal, hadn't been there, or if you you know you do have an occasion to see a fire, certainly report it. Call nine one one and report it. Call nine one one. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yeah, I do have a question. Yes, sir, Commissioner. And it, <clears throat> you said you were going to send out uh, media, letting people know not to burn. Are you also going to put on there that they can take their bundles and put them on the side of the, you know, put them out there where the trash goes? Um, I know that they'll take up to four inches, uh, you know, any limb up to four inches. They'll come by and pick it up if it's stacked out there. And that's what I would suggest everybody, that they just put it out there, they'll pick it up. Or, like you said, they can take a load to the landfill uh, on their own. And for the for the public's knowledge, uh, we allow so much a year to go from a resident's place, so many tons a year of trash without any charge being done out there. So people could take stuff out there uh, yeah. to the landfill with no charge if they haven't already went over their allotted tonnage for that year. I can't remember the exact tonnage, but 
I don't remember, but important to know that's residents, not businesses. Right, residents. I'm sorry, you're right. All right, thank you. If I might, another thing to point out is I think they, they'll also they'll pick up um, <clears throat> yard clippings that are put in bags and on the curb as well. Yes. And, and that's another important, you wouldn't think that green grass would start on fire, but I've personally seen piles of, of long clippings spontaneously combust. It does happen, so. Wow. Well, we just need, the citizens need to be diligent and look for opportunities not to burn our beautiful county down. And um, we need to be very diligent in this matter. So thank you very much. Any other questions, Commissioner? Okay, um, we have two items in front of us. One, a proclamation declaring local state of emergency for Putnam County Board of County Commissioners. We just need a motion. Y yes, sir. A uh, separate motion for each, please. All right. Okay. I'll make a motion that we accept this proclamation. All right. We have a proper motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a proper second by Commissioner Pickens. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Pose like sign. The ayes have it. The next item will be Putnam County Emergency Order Number 2017. Emergency order regarding open burning during the forest and brush fire declared emergency. Commissioners, the chair will entertain a motion. We'll make that motion. We have a proper motion by Commissioner Pickens. I'll second. Proper second by Commissioner Goddard. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. Yes. Just one follow up and it, it may be a Stacy Manning question. As far as this is good for seven days, as we move along, we'll have to get the chair's signature, or okay. what would the process be for reissue or continuing this down the road? Um, I, I, the chair can sign for um, for the renewals um, for the seven day renewals. The, the administrator can as well, but the hierarchy would be if the chair is available, he would sign. I'll be available. This is important to the county. So yes, we'll, we'll make sure it's signed, and whenever you need me to, you just give me a call. Thank you, sir. Thank you for all your hard work, and we'll be praying for lots of rain to come this way. So thank you. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you. All right, is there any other matters that need to come before the board? Seeing none, this meeting's adjourned.